Welcome to the Lisa Bubari Podcast. Be sure to connect with Lisa at www.healwithin.com. That's healwithin.com. And now we go live to the 6th Annual 3E Event, where Lisa is interviewing fashion icon, Su Wong. A long time ago, seemingly in another lifetime, I was born into humble circumstances in a remote rural countryside in southern China. At the age of five, I was spirited away from Maoist China by the courageous leap of my mother, who risked all to be reunited with my father, the one love of her life. She had sewn her wedding jewelry in a small little pillow and gave it to the border guard to trade for our freedom into British Hong Kong. I originated from the Taishan region near Guangzhou, the land of my ancestry. The Taishan region of southern China where my parents and I came from produced the first Chinese settlers in America. My own great-great-grandfather worked on the railroads near Sacramento in the 1800s and directly contributed to the building of America the Great. This resonates profoundly with my parents' immigrant story of sacrifice and determination the migration to America being the very core focus for opportunities and economic success that were promised on Gold Mountain. Gold Mountain was basically what uh, the Chinese used to call America, and it was really the result of the gold mining days, the gold rush in California. Growing up in America, I was the daughter of struggling Chinese immigrants. I was born an artist, and my success is completely my own. I'm completely self-made. Through the pure impetus of the will, I epitomized a great American success story by becoming a huge success twice in my life. In the course of my long career, I've had great surges and rises. However, I believe conflict and adversity are often blessings in disguise. I don't ever regress in the face of adversity as I believe in a strong sense of personal destiny. I believe that there is a divine purpose in everything that comes our way. And struggle, pain, and loss are all part of our our overall journey and human experience which forges our fate. Life lessons will come at you constantly. The test is how you deal with the slings and and arrows that life points at you. Therefore, to me, there is no such thing as a negative experience. Rather, it's about perceiving lessons as blessings in disguise. I lost two fabulous fortunes and everything that I built twice in my life. And twice I rebuilt it and grew stronger than ever before. If there is a fire, and I am the equivalent of a moth, then I plunge myself into that fire knowingly, even if it means that I have to crash and burn, so that ultimately I, re- I resurrect myself into the phoenix that I'm truly meant to be. Creativity is something that emanates deeply from within the soul, and all creations are mirrors of one's soul. Being an artist means that one is born with a different perception regarding the world. One's psychic sense and one's awareness of the world is more keen and acute. Artists are more sensitive and more directly connected to feeling. Therefore, creativity is highly highly psychic, intuitive, and visionary, and requires much tuning in to the etheric realms. It is not solid matter it is drawn from spirit essences. As a creative intuitive, I apply my artistic sensibilities to everything that I do, therefore optimizing the higher gifts that I was blessed with, whether it would be, whether it be interior, furniture, or garden design, architecture, graphics design, painting, drawing, writing, cooking, ikebana, throwing a stylish soiree, art directing a photo shoot, or creating an experiential fashion show. 
My biggest blessing was to have been born an artist, and I feel so honored to have had the privilege to share my art and creativity with the world. The ability to give creative expression to my art is the privilege of a lifetime. I love sharing insights into my design sensibilities and iconography, not to mention the infinite reservoir of powerful designs that translate into iconic imagery. I infuse my design work with a very powerful, universal, yet esoteric spirituality. I strongly believe that pure art accesses truths that are a strong catalyst to healing. Artists heal themselves through the, through the language of beauty as manifested through their art. When art evokes and elicits such a strong reaction, a communion unfolds between the artist and the audience. In that instant, a divine occurrence transpires, awakening a profound healing. My work is a healing ritual not only to myself, but, many, but to the many women who wear Su Wong fashion. Dustin, please come up. <laughs> My designs heal through the power of beauty, connecting women with their ultimate feminine divine to the goddess who resides in every woman. In the future, Su Wong homes, which I will be designing, will be temples of healing and renewal in which the inhabitants can restore themselves in a beautiful environment for the healing of body, mind, and spirit, embodying my Su Wong mantra of beauty, magic, and transformation. So uh, Dustin is wearing, uh, come back up here. <laughs> She's wearing um, an Art Deco inspired scallop um, motif with a scallop bottom, and it has a very, very sexy back. <laughs> And, and she's channeling sort of a 1920s flapper. Isn't she gorgeous, ladies? <laughs> okay, now to the next one. We're giving you a little miniature fashion show t t today. So, <laughs> I practice a healing through beauty invoked and awakened in my designs applicable to a vast array of mediums. As a designer whose sensibilities and iconography transcend many genres, I have a heightened appreciation for architecture and how living spaces deliver safe havens and paradigms that exemplify who we are, celebrating all aspects that make us individual from spatial configurations, textures, colors, and ambiance, and life as experiential art. Architecture is the forever evolving living sculptural embodiment that celebrates all these multi-dimensional realms that optimizes a heightened living experience. My art and iconography of oat style is not just is not just exclusive to fashion, but mutually expressive as a powerful conduit of healing through architecture and design. I have been designing professionally since I was 19 years old. By the age of 25, I had accomplished the American dream. I was one of the highest paid commercial designers, making millions of dollars a year, and I had four homes by my mid-20s two mansions side by side on Point Doom in Malibu, a home on the ocean front on Hana Bay in Maui in Hawaii, and my first house in the Hollywood Hills that I bought when I was 22 years old. You might say that I was an overachiever. <laughs> <laughs> I had something, you know, to prove I had a dark father, so I had to really seek his approval, you know, for all of my life. I was living the glam life, just setting in the Concord to London and Paris and living large. By the age of 30, I had lost it all, and I was emotionally and financially devastated. 
I had two young babies and my parents to take care of it, to take care of. In my youthful arrogance, I thought I would recover all my losses in record time. The gods and power to be taught me a very humbling lesson. It would be another 20 years before my next wave of success would arrive. I lived through symbols, myths, and metaphors, and I consider myself to be a warrior goddess. I have three patron goddesses to whom I pay metaphorical homage, Aphrodite, Artemis, and Athena, and they hang in the formal dining room of my historical palazzo, the Cedars. Aphrodite, the goddess of beauty and love. I worship at her temple every day in the creative work that I do in honoring the eternal feminine and in living and creating beauty. Artemis, goddess of the hunt, she propels me towards the field of achievement and accomplishment to be an active doer and to be an active manifester of all of my dreams. Athena, the goddess of wisdom, I perceive life as an ongoing wondrous odyssey of acquiring knowledge and wisdom, surviving and learning life lessons in an ever-evolving journey towards one's higher self. Therefore, I'm a creator of beauty, a fearless warrior, and what I strive for in life ultimately is wisdom, wisdom as a compass to live by. I perceive existence to be an endlessly fascinating dance between the manifest physical reality, which is mirrored and projected by one's internal landscape, the subconscious mind. As a late great Dr. Wayne Dyer taught, so as you think, so shall you be. Think, act, and become. These are the three powerful words that create human destiny. We become what we think, what we speak, and what we act upon. This is the true secret to self-empowerment. Absolute freedom and the realization of one's utmost potential lies in the ultimate knowledge that we are always the masters of our own destiny. Everything you are against weakens you. Everything that you are, that you embrace in a positive way, empowers you. The secret to living is giving. If one follow one's dreams, then one has hope and inspiration to share with others. The pursuit of one's dreams will give oneself courage, for it takes courage to create the manifest destiny of your dreams. It is imperative to keep your dreams alive. Anything worthy requires unwavering belief in oneself. By holding on to the vision of your dreams, one can actualize them through commitment, focus, and determination. I'm a living example of that. In the words of Napoleon Hill, cherish all visions and all your dreams as they are the children of your soul, the ultimate blueprint of your achievements. Think big, there is no passion to be found in small dreams. Do not settle for a life less than the one you are capable of inhabiting. Live your quantum potential. Here we are with the beautiful Dustin Quick again. And she is wearing a 1930s inspired gorgeous Hollywood glamour gown. It's all uh, first embroidered um, in um, this beautiful Borghese gold, I call it, with metallic thread. And then it's really outlined with round beading. And it has a fishtail hem, which it gives it really beautiful movement when the wearer walks or dances. And uh, the shade is this very antique shade of sandalwood rose. Doesn't she look magnificent, ladies? <laughs> so, I'm at the crossroads in my life. 
I'm in the throes of making a bio-op movie about my life as I've had an extraordinary life journey to share with the world. Although it's in its nascent stages of development, I have a very compelling life story to tell. I was born into the tumultuous turmoil of the Maoist revolution. Then I grew up in America as the daughter of hardworking Chinese immigrants. I became of age during the hippie flower child era in Bohemian Venice Beach. And my story has all the human elements of a Shakespearean tragedy. It is a story of lust, power, greed, fame, money, sacrifice, betrayal, death and treachery set against the glittering evanescent backdrop of high fashion and glamour. I lived my life at a great personal price with huge struggles and dramatic upheavals woven in between. It's a story of unfathomable challenges, redemption, and finally great success after much struggle. Ultimately, it is a story of female and self-empowerment and the resilience of the human spirit to triumphantly survive and persevere. A story of hope that can, be serve, that can serve as a source of inspiration for hopefully millions of people globally. My designs and the Su Wong style carry a hybridized ethos that connects the East and the West because that is who I am, both ancient and modern, both East and West. My designs bring a cultural understanding, standing, and unity between all worlds as Su Wong aesthetics have universal global appeal. Therefore, I'm going back to China to bring my brand to China and as the returning prodigal daughter of China, I envision bringing to my motherland all that I have learned here in the West with a lifetime of practice in my art and profession. I'm working to create an iconic Su Wong mega brand in China in the categories of fashion, beauty, home, and lifestyle to encompass Su Wong branded luxury homes, hotels, and resorts, all as modalities for the beauty and for the art of living. I am in deep gratitude and appreciation of the life that I have been given. It has been indeed a wondrous and magical journey. I don't think I would have really traded this ride for it, anyone else's in the world. <laughs> even though it has been a huge challenge. The essence of my message is for everyone to simply embrace life with full fervor and great passion. As one of my favorite teachers, Joseph Campbell, taught, follow your bliss. I have followed mine, and therefore I am manifesting and living my dreams. Thank you so much. And I'm going to invite Dustin to come on one more time on stage. And here she is. Now, I, I must say that my designs are, they really sort of have a timeless quality because all these gowns that you've been seeing, you know, are from different periods of my design life. This one was designed about 15 years ago. And yet, you know, you can see how it really holds up. It's really silk charmeuse or silk uh, satin, all sort of spaghetti strips to really create a, um, a, a hem, a fringed hem. And it's uh, in this crimson color, and I think it suits the goddess <laughs> to a T. Thank you so much, Dustin. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm going to hand um, the microphone over to uh, Lisa, and uh, I can take a few, field a few uh, questions and answers. If you ladies have any, 
If you ladies have any uh, questions for me, I will, uh, I will be glad to really answer any questions that you might have. Uh, Lisa might ask me a few questions, so here I am. Ms. Wong, one of my questions is, first and foremost, I want to thank you for gracing our stage. Thank you, I'm honored and to be also here. also with the beautiful fashion and the designs. Approximately three years ago, I contacted you and uh, your assistant was uh, gracious enough to let me know that you were not available, so I tried last year, and you can see I'm very tenacious, and I found <laughs> a way to have you here this year. When you design your clothes, is it something that comes to you as a gift, or do you design with a woman or someone in mind, especially when it's a, another celebrity? Um, actually, I don't really design with celebrities in mind at all. Um, like I had mentioned, you know, creativity comes from the ether, so I really channel the, the um, creativity. It really comes through me, you know, as a divine source. And, uh, you know, I happen to be very, very prolific. I designed, you know, basically about 1,500 designs a year, everything that you see. Um, you know, it's 1,500 of them plus a year. So, um, and also in between stolen moments, I really have designed my homes, my corporate offices, my um, beautiful, fabulous showrooms. So, um, I, I think it's just really energy that really comes through us. And I'm very lucky that I really am an open conduit to really receive this very beautiful divine energy and it just really moves through me, and um, I feel very honored and humbled by it. Thank you for that answer. You're welcome. You, talk, <laughs> you have uh, three, mm, like the transformation, it's uh, yours is the gifts. When you tap into spirituality, and I know uh, we have a mutual fr a friend who is Frank Tuffler, Oh yes, he's, he's, he's a sweet friend of mine. Yes, and he was saying that you are more spiritual and down to earth and the parts of the masks that we wear that you had to wear in your life that has also created this place that you are today. How do you shift from the ego to the spirituality and back to a humbleness that you are at home and the people who know you? Well, you know, I've always been, you know, as an artist, I've always been really more sensitive, so I think I've always really had a very strong uh, spiritual life. It's really never left me. It, it really entered um, into me probably from the time that I was two or three years old, so I've always been very cognizant and aware of my environment, and I started to ask questions, you know, what does this all mean? What you know, why are we here? What is the purpose of being alive? And in the world, of course, we must really wear some mask. Um, but, you know, underneath it all, I basically feel that the mask is just only a persona that we really wear on uh, or put on. It's, it's really like, you know, putting on um, a social uh, mask or a piece of clothing. It's not who we really are sometimes. Um, but actually, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, you can really ask all the people here that are my personal friends, I'm pretty constant. I really, you know, I'm a, a very down-to-earth, no-nonsense sort of person, even though I live in the etheric realms, you know, when I create, but I'm actually a very down-to-earth person. Um, I, you know, um, just I'm very no-nonsense, and maybe it really comes from my peasant roots, you know, when I was really growing up as a child in mainland China. Thank you for that. You're very welcome. How does one, especially our audience right here, when you have had two struggles of loss and reclaimed and re-empowered yourself to where you are today, what was that one unique thing that it's within you that says, I am worthy, I matter, and this is where I am supposed to be no matter where I am down there. How do we, how do we get up there? You just really never leave, you know, um, your um, uh, position of hope, 
of, uh, you know, you never give up. I never did because I never really allowed myself to be defeated. Um, of all the tragedies that I've been through, and I've been through many, trust me, I could have really just crawled into a corner and died. But I chose not to because I always knew that I was really destined for higher things and everything always passes. So you just really have to never give up hope and always keep in your mind's eye the visualization and the focus of where you really want to be. And um, that determination, the tenacity to overcome is what really creates triumph in a person's will and therefore in their manifestations of all, the, all their dreams. And my next question is, who is the most unlikely person that has been an inspiration or you have looked up to or surrounded yourself with? Well, you know, I would say I entered um, union therapy probably about 17 years ago, and that really completely changed my life. So, um, I would say my two heroes in life, I mean, certainly two of them, uh, not all of them, but uh, Carl Jung and Joseph Campbell, and it's really no accident that they were really good friends because Joseph Campbell spoke um, fluent German and would really visit Dr. Jung in Switzerland for quite some time. But, you know, I love the fact that these, well, Carl Jung, basically devise a system of spirituality to me without the hocus pocus of organized religion. And he really made um, Joseph, uh, uh, Joseph Campbell also made total sense of the human experience by combining philosophy, psychology, um, anthropology, mythology, and um, he just really made sense, you know, he combined it all to really make sense of uh, that whole uh, hero's journey, which is really the journey of our souls. So um, I'm very grateful for these two men for opening up my consciousness to really a very much higher perception of life. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions Let's take uh, questions from the audience. Yes. yes. First of all, your creations exquisite doesn't even define how beautiful they are. Well, thank you so much. Well, let's invite Dustin up here again. <laughs> this is our final outfit. This is stunning. And I designed this probably, mm, I would have to say about probably 12, 13 years ago. Wow. But it's a beautiful tool beaded jacket with a faux fur trim over a slip gown beautiful. of silk sh chiffon. It's all with copper beading. Exquisite. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dustin. So I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your, your question, but... <laughs> well, I actually take all of that into consideration, you know. Um, and age is really only a state of mind because, you know, I'm going to be 69 in a few weeks, you know. <laughs> yes. And, uh, Fire. and uh, you know, uh, in my clothing, I try to accentuate the positive and minimize the negatives. Uh, by understanding the female anatomy. And, uh, you know, um, I'm going to tell you a story relating to, to, to that, okay? I was giving a trunk show in uh, at South Coast Plaza at Neiman Marcus one year. And so I was on the floor meeting and greeting the guests and, uh, you know, my fans. And there was this beautiful, coiffed, and beautifully made up woman who was 77 years old. And she came up to me and she said, you know, Sue, I just love your designs, but I can't really wear them. 
And I said, of course you can. So I made a selection and put some, put three things into the dressing room for her. Well, she was going on a cruise to celebrate her first anniversary. No, actually, she was 83 years old. It was her husband who was 77 years old. <laughs> anyway, good she, choice. Yes, she married a, a you know, a, a, he married her. Yes, that's right. <laughs> So she came out with this plunging neckline with a slit out to here. I think that poor man's eyes popped out of his socket. And she ended up buying three, all three of my dresses and gowns to go on her anniversary, on her first anniversary cruise. So there you wow. go. You certainly can wear Su Wong. There you go. There's nothing wrong with you or your body or anything. There, it's thank all you. a state of mind. It's all a state of mind, everybody. In one of my works that I do, I have a lot of uh, women and men, but mostly women who come to me for self image and self esteem. When we look at your designs, talking about body image, what does the mirror usually say to us? And when we decide to wear a Su Wang, when we feel good about ourselves, isn't that what your art and creativity is all about? Is um, feeling good about who we are in the clothes? Yes, indeed. I mean, I do honor the goddess, you know, and I try to really connect every woman with her feminine divine. Actually, let me get back to myself for a minute, okay? Um, I'm really told, I was told by my therapist, and I totally agree with him, that, you know, we choose our professions for a reason. There is a reason why we choose what we do out in the world. And so I kind of asked myself, oh, why did I become a fashion designer when I could have really done anything else in the visual arts? You know, and uh, so I finally figured it out that it was really my dark father who basically eroded at my own feminine self-esteem. So basically becoming a fashion designer and designing the quintessential goddess clothing, because you can see that everything I do is really old feminine. So that was how I healed the wounded goddess in myself by really designing these beautiful clothes for women to really empower themselves with beauty because you can talk to any women who have really have worn my clothing. They heal through the power of beauty and you know, connecting women with their eternal feminine divine. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> As a believer in energy, I know that every time you design, a part of your energy, a part of your intention is also in your designs. So automatically when we put it on, and I have one. <laughs> I have one short one, long time ago. When we put it on, it's as if I am, and we have arrived, or we feel good. Yes, so I, I would say, you know, um, any art that is created, any creativity that is created is infused with the artist's soul or spirit. So you are getting a piece of my spirit when you wear one of my clothing. So uh, my mantra, let me explain to you what it is. It's called beauty, period, magic, period transformation period. So what I create is the beauty. And the alchemy of beauty is magical. And that magic has the power to transform. So I like to really believe that when a woman puts on a Su Wong gown or dress, she is magically transformed into the goddess that she aspires to be. It's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> and may I segue into 
what 3E truly stands for, which is the evoke part that we bring forth from beneath, just like the lotus that comes from very deep waters. And we embrace who we are as we are, and we evolve, which is the transformation. And this 3E, the, the sign itself, it's not connected on the top, but only here that once the three and E face one another, it's as if the body of a woman and that body of woman is perfection with its imperfection. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me, Lisa. Thank you for being here. And thank you ladies for really attending today and for listening to my little story. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Lisa Bubari Podcast. Don't forget to connect with Lisa. Go to HealWithin.com. That's HealWithin.com.